Hello everyone, Pally Tom here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. I have a quick spotlight video for you guys. Even though I've put over 600 hours into this game, there are still items that I keep finding that make my jaw drop. And today, we're going to be talking about one of these items. Despite my many playthroughs going through the Underdark, I have not found this item before. It's the Bow of the Banshee. I'll show you where to get it after we do a little bit of a demonstration here. But when I learned about this item, immediately I had a light bulb moment where I was like, you could easily make something for this that's really, really strong, doesn't require very many items, and I still think it would be viable in Act 3. The Bow of the Banshee has a chance of inflicting fear on any target that we hit with a ranged attack. My Astarian here is just a level 12 Battlemaster, nothing fancy at all. Battlemasters have ways of fearing as well with something like a menacing attack. And of course, there are spells that can fear enemies as well, but both of those have a cost. You cannot do that indefinitely. You will run out of resources to fund those actions. However, with the Bow of the Banshee, every single time we attack, it has a chance of fearing and crowd controlling a target. I have some guards over here that I want to settle a score with, and I'll show you exactly how strong this setup can be. And remember, this is all for free. We're casting fear for free. I am going to help things along just by casting a bless onto my Astarian. And we're also going to give him a bit of haste as well, just to once again, help the demonstration. This is a very easy setup though. If you wanted to buff your archer before any conflict, you could definitely do that. Now this is going to look bad, but I have to kill the reporter here. Otherwise this combat encounter won't work. I've tried, I've tried it before. Don't you worry. I'm a professional. So across the road here from Astarian, we have five melee guards that are blocking the way into the worm rest castle. There is also the fist beneath us that has a range attack. Now, fear is very strong crowd control, but it's mostly focused on melee combatants, and I'll show you why that is. We're just going to start blasting over here on the rooftop. With each shot that we fire, we have a chance of fearing. It looks like that first shot did not do it, so we're just going to shoot again. The first of the guards are now frightened. So I can continue to shoot at this target. We do increase damage to feared targets, so that wouldn't be a bad play at all. I'm also going to go ahead and just action surge here. Looks like the way combat started, I am going to miss out on a few attacks this turn. We shoot the other guard in front and frighten them as well. Let's see if we can continue some shots here into the back. That's another frightened. That's three out of the five targets taken care of already. And let's shoot once more into the back. Looks like he did save. So it's not guaranteed every single shot but those three targets that are frightened right now will not be able to advance towards me. This archer, the reason I didn't shoot him is because he has a ranged weapon. He could just shoot from that point with that ranged weapon without moving near me. Now, only two of these guards are going to be able to advance while the other two are frightened for yet another turn. So they've effectively removed themselves from the turn order. They have done nothing to advance on my party or to pressure Astarian. And now that we do have some more opposition coming our way, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna start to shoot them instead. He does save on that attack. We shoot one more time, he's frightened. Now we move our attention to the next of the guards that would be advancing. Now, you do not have to solo the game as an archer to make this viable. I just wanna be clear about that. We took down one of the only guards that was not frightened. So now that frees me up to move in and deal damage to one of these targets where the frightened effect would be ending soon. So they're about to snap out of the fear. Let's start putting some damage into them. And that is, that's looking pretty good. So what do we do about this archer? Well, while Astarian is keeping the tide back, we could easily set up our melee combatants. In this instance, I have an assassin that can enter the fight, deal sneak attack damage, luck of the realms to try to get a crit. And if I wanted to follow that up with another attack, I absolutely could. And because all of these guys are feared, none of these melee combatants can get any closer to my assassin either. It is so much control on the battlefield. It allows you to really control the tide of enemies 
trying to approach you, especially in a situation like this. Now, I do have alert on my Astarian, so he will literally go first in every single combat encounter as well, making it even easier to stop your opponents where they are standing. They're trying to throw stuff at me because that's their only option. Astarian in this setup as well has 26 AC, so I don't think anyone's gonna be hitting him anytime soon. Not with these silly little javelins. And as the guards do approach my assassin, don't you worry, I have a plan for that as well. Astarian is going to try and fear the targets that are approaching him, which so far, we have done just fine. That one did not connect, so let's fire off another one. There we go. Everyone is frightened yet again. Actually, I missed one. This guy. We'll just kill him off. We don't need to worry about frightening him. And my assassin can totally protect himself just by casting a bit of darkness here. These guys don't even have targets to shoot at, much less the ability to run towards anyone. And now that they're all basically feared in an easy firing spot, we're going to deal bonus damage to each of these targets and finish them off in no time. Oh no, he jumped onto the roof next to me. Whatever shall we do? Well, with our setup, I still have a 90% chance to hit, even though I'm being threatened in melee range. So I'm really not too worried about it at all. Astarian has done this entire fight up here from the roof, has not taken a single point of damage. And well, there's only one more guard left. And with that shot, we cleared them out. That is so much control. It allows you to set up ambushes for your enemies and they can't even advance against you. So if you want to get this bow, where does it come from? We have traveled back in time to what I assume is a very familiar location for many of you watching this video. We are at the Underdark Beach, specifically mere steps away from the Dwegar vessel that many of us have um, commandeered before <laughs> to travel to the other side of the Underdark. Now, if you do steal the vessel, you will be caught up with by other Dwegar. I've done this encounter over a dozen times. This guy gets on my boat and every single time I do the athletics check to push him off. Maybe it's that check that has always stopped me from just checking his inventory because this little guy right here is the only way of getting the bow of the Banshee. Now, supposedly there's a way of looting him after you get to the other side of the Underdark. I have never seen that. So if you know how to do that, please let us know down in the comments. But for a mere 300 gold, if you could scrape it together this early in the game, that will allow you to get the bow of the Banshee. And I think this thing's going to be excellent right out of the box. Even if you're not getting guaranteed fear effects on every single enemy, it's going to deal some pretty good damage. And it could push you into the late game. No problem. Speaking of pushing. I don't have any strength on this character. Will we, will it work? Okay. No, not today. Not today. All right. That's going to be really awkward. Got him, fellas. <laughs> if the idea of a fearing archer has sparked your imagination in any way, I do feel like there is one more like required item that I would pick up, and this is the Shield of the Undevout. You can find this in Act 3. It's the guards outside of the Murder Tribunal. If you are following the Orin the Red storyline, you likely know exactly what I'm talking about. I actually learned about this shield first and then started looking into ways that I could utilize it, and that's what led me to the bow. Other than that, I have very generic uh, rings that increase my damage. The Risky Ring is going to give us advantage on attacks, making it very easy to land our attacks. We also get Bless from my Cleric, who has the Staff of Arcane Blessing, once again, making our attacks even easier to land. If we are hitting enemies, we are potentially fearing enemies, and that's a very high priority to me. Ring of Regeneration couples with the Brood Mother's Revenge just to give us a little bit of poison damage on each turn. Not required at all. Swap in any rings you want to here. I have Saravox Helmet, which is lowering our crit roll requirement just a little bit. Cloak of Displacement, which is going to keep us safe. The Armor of Agility gives us a pretty high amount of AC. Main 
mainly because we have the 20 dexterity that we've gotten through ability improvements throughout our leveling up. The Hell Dust Gloves give us a bit more damage with each attack. And like I said, none of this really matters. You could fill this out however you want. All you really need is the Bow of the Banshee to get started. And then later in Act 3, I highly recommend the Shield of the Undevout. It's going to offer you a lot of control on the battlefield as well as extra damage into those crowd controlled targets. And if you're stopping melee combatants from approaching your party, you're just protecting everyone even more. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it. The bow's very, very fun. If you're going to use it in one of your builds, or if you would change up our setup in any way, let us know down in the comments. Like I said, I think Ranger could do excellent with this. Any class that could shoot a bow is going to have a great time. If you guys enjoyed today's video, let me know down in the comments, and I will see you again very soon.